Why is it that when you hold a match to an ice cube, it just melts? But when you do the same to a log of wood, the wood catches fire and burns. Even more so, why is it that if you even give a funny look to a compound like nitroglycerin, it violently explodes? As it turns out, all of these questions can be answered by looking at potential energy. As a general rule, potential energy can be thought of as energy that could go somewhere else, given the opportunity. For example, let's think about a ball on top of a hill. When it's just sitting at the top of the hill, it has no energy due to its motion, or kinetic energy. If it were to roll down the hill, it would gain a certain amount of kinetic energy, and this amount of energy that it could have is exactly its potential energy. Since the ball wants to get rid of this potential energy any way it can, it will end up rolling down the hill, converting its potential energy to kinetic energy. A very similar story plays out in different types of chemicals. However, instead of high points and low points on a hill, these chemicals change the configurations of atoms and molecules. And instead of converting their potential energy to kinetic energy only, they also convert it into things like heat and light. So why do different chemicals behave so differently? First, let's consider the case of water. If we draw a direct comparison to our ball on a hill, water would be like if the ball was in a very deep valley. Since the ball is already at its lowest point, it can't go anywhere to pick up kinetic energy, and therefore already has the lowest amount of potential energy possible. Similarly, this is why water doesn't burn or explode. The atoms that make up the water molecules are already in a very low energy configuration, and so they do not have potential energy to get rid of. Now, what about compounds that do burn or explode? These are like when our ball is sitting at the top of a hill. They could have less potential energy if they change their molecular configuration. But then why don't all flammable or explosive things immediately burn? Well, it's as if there is a small bump between where our ball sits and the hill that will allow it to convert its potential energy. To actually get our molecules to change and release this energy, we have to give them a little kick to begin with. This is known as an activation energy, and it's why you have to hold a match to a log in the first place. Once you give the molecules some activation energy, they can break apart into their preferred compounds and release their potential energy as light, heat, and sound. Now, if this released energy is greater than the activation energy, then it will give the nearby molecules enough energy to also break apart and so on. This leads to a chain reaction. The log will still burn, even though you're not holding a match to it anymore. This idea of activation energy is also why some chemicals, like nitroglycerin, will explode given the slightest provocation. Their activation energy is much, much lower than that of a log or even other explosives. So in our analogy with the ball, this bump is much, much smaller in the case of nitroglycerin than, say, wood or coal, and any kind of nudge will send it cascading down the hill. But what about compounds like TNT, which are both incredibly stable, yet still highly explosive? This would tell us that TNT has a high activation energy, but then why does it explode while wood or coal, which are similarly stable, just burn? This actually has to do with how fast the chain reaction occurs. Since wood and coal need an outside reactant, like oxygen, to burn, this limits how fast the reaction can take place. So, while wood and coal can release a lot of energy, actually about five to six times as much energy as TNT, it does so very slowly, leading to a nice warm holiday fire. TNT, on the other hand, does not need any outside reactants, and so once it's given the right amount of kick, the chain reaction will occur very rapidly, releasing all of its stored energy in a very short amount of time, leading to a much less pleasant experience. The idea that things want to minimize their potential energy as much as possible shows up everywhere in physics. It can explain why a ball rolls down a hill, why springs go back and forth, why the planets revolve around the sun, why things explode, and even why fundamental particles have mass.